Ondine uh, took me to the Campo di Fiori market, which was great for me to see because Rome is it's a city that marches on its stomach. I mean, this looks like it is the basis of, of Roman cuisine right here, doesn't it? Absolutely. It's very simple, um, you know, whatever is in season. This place feels really Roman to me. I mean, it reminds me of something out of uh, De Sica's The Bicycle Thief. Well, that was uh, filmed at one of the most famous markets in Rome, Porto Portese, but that's an antiques market. This is the most famous uh, Campo di Fiori for flowers and fruits and vegetables. Marketplaces are another part of Rome that are sort of everyday things, and yet, as a visitor, you go there and you feel just like this is such a spectacle, even though it's something that for most Romans they do every single day. Look at these. Oh, it looks amazing. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Buongiorno, Buongiorno signore. Che c'è di stagione? Che di Italia sarebbe i paragonini del bosco. These are like wild strawberries. Yeah, they are tiny, aren't they? They're tiny, but so sweet. Grazie. Prego. Oh, wow. Mm. Amazing. Really incredible. It almost tastes like fake strawberry flavoring. <laughs> the different fruits in season, the vendors, the characters, all the time being enclosed by a beautiful space is really a wonderful way to see some of Roman life. I took Mark to San Pietrino because it exemplifies the kind of Roman cooking that I like so much. It's very simple. It's influenced by Jewish cuisine. And we met with the owner, Oscar, and his grandmother, Paola, who are the owners of this restaurant in the Jewish quarter of the city. I thought we were just going to sit down and have a little bit of lunch, but oh no. They wanted us to go shopping for our lunch. They took us to one of the local shops and showed us the typical Italian meat. Eh, sì, Marco, no, un po' di, dobbiamo comprare un po' di guanciale e del prosciutto. Okay. And what is that? I know, I say that uh, I want to buy uh, ham and uh, pork jowl. La nonna, this is the woman of the family. She is the one who is most respected the way that her tomato sauce is made is the way that everyone else in the family should make it. And seeing Paola with her grandson, Oscar, you could see that the power dynamic was all in her favor. The tomato should have been made this morning. She's not very happy. She liked the pecorino grattato all'ultimo minuto, the last time. Would you better work a bit harder? <laughs> She's going to be very angry if you're not ready. Yes. <laughs> See, rules this, isn't it? <laughs> They prepared this uh, dish that's veal and prosciutto that's called salta in bocca. Salta in bocca. That means to Hello, jump Mama. into your mouth. That's how good it is. It jumps into your <laughs> what mouth. What a great name. It, it's an exquisite dish, and it's a very simple dish. It's really good quality veal that um, she, Paola, wrapped around um, the ham and then put in the pan with oil and butter and quite a few sage leaves. It only takes 10 minutes to cook, wow. and then it jumps My into your mouth. My already. <laughs> well, I'll just wait. <laughs> Is it possible? <laughs> it's really, really delicious. They prepared pasta a la amatriana, which is pig jowl, tomatoes, a little bit of onion. Non ci divaghiamo. She's telling him to watch her pasta. She doesn't want it overcooked. She wants everything to be perfect. You cook for about 20 minutes and poured over rigatoni, and then you add a little pecorino cheese. It was superb. Ask her if she'll come home with us. Vieni a New York con noi. 
No, kupuj nomad, czy wiesz, on. No, bo każdy tam się łapca nie rozpyta. Tam się łapca. Tam kamień na umydać. Kokusi na do dancy łapca do dominy. The Hotel Eden is one of the most famous hotels in all of Rome. It's very serene and luxurious, and yet at the same time, it's quite minimal. It's definitely classical, but it's not overdone, so there's a simplicity to it as well. And the terrace bar is wonderful. It's where Federico Fellini had all of his interviews with journalists. It's located so that it's very close to the major tourist sites during the day, but then at night, it's near to all of the night spots that are hot and happening. So tonight, I'm taking you on a La Dolce Vita tour of Rome, oh the old Dolce Vita of the 60s, and then where the Dolce Vita crowd of today go. Um, did you rent this dog just in case there are any lurking paparazzi? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there was a dachshund in La Dolce Vita, so I thought he'd be an appropriate uh, an accessory. La Dolce Vita means the sweet life. And um, it was immortalized in a movie with Marcello Mastrani and Anouk M.A. in 1959, made by Federico Fellini. La Dolce Vita is a story about a celebrity journalist who tries to get the photographs of the actress's royalty hopefully someone who's involved in a bit of a scandal. And so I found one of the most famous paparazzi photographers from the 1960s, Rino Barillari. And he has been doing this job for 35 years, and he's taken pictures of basically any celebrity who's come to Rome. Normal. Lauren, he's taken pictures of Chris before. Kelly, no problem. Grace Kelly is not a problem. They would come to Rome, but only go out at night, not during the day. That way, nobody would bother them on the street. <laughs> Except for you. Yes. Piazza Navona is probably one of the most spectacular piazzas in Rome. And when we arrived, it was throbbing, it was full of life full of vitality. There were sketch artists, there were painters, there were cafes, there were people. Everybody, after dinner, starts their evening out in Rome at Piazza Navona. So basically, everyone who's anyone comes to Piazza Navona. Piazza Navona. Why do they? Perché? Perché porta fortuna la piazza because it brings you fortune, it's splendid, it's beautiful. Even though Reno has been taking photographs since the 60s, he's still running around Rome and knows all the more trendy 21st century spots for the beautiful and the famous to go. So he took us to Bar de la Pace and we went in and had some champagne. <laughs> oh my God. How are you? Alla dolce vita. Alla dolce vita. Alla dolce vita, okay. <laughs> E perché questo bar in particolare? È particolare perché è conosciuto in tutto il mondo, quasi, anche in Italia. Everyone knows this bar, everyone in Italy knows this bar, everyone anywhere knows this bar. It was really great to go with Reno to Harry's Bar because that's one of the old haunts from um, the kind of the original Dolce Vita from the 60s. Just by coincidence, Reno was actually having an exhibit at Harry's Bar, so we were able to see some of the snaps that he's taken over the years. We were talking a lot about the life of a paparazzo, and um, I noticed a couple of pictures of Reno in a very tricky situation. Now this. Oh, che è successo qui? Che è successo questo? Questa signora. Questa sono io molto. Lei si è sposata. She was married, and so she's out with this younger man. E lei arrabbiata. And he was trying to take their picture, so an ice cream in the face. Okay, where are we going now? We're going to Fontaine. Well, of course, they're trying to be I knew that. Forza, andiamo. Come on. So the three of us went strolling by the Trevi Fountain just in case somebody was having 
uh, latter-day iconic Anita Ekberg moment and perhaps might be bathing in the fountain. Well, they weren't, but we did make our three wishes with our three coins in the fountain. Everybody who comes to Rome Vieni a questa fontana per buttare tre monetine. To take three coins. Uno è per l'amore. One for love. Uno per la felicità. One for happiness. E un altro per tornare a Roma. And one for coming back to Rome. I'll buy into that. I think Reno put it really well when he said things change, people change, but the Dolce Vita does continue forever. Nice. One moment. One mo no, one, mo one moment. One moment. One moment. One moment. One kiss. Kiss. To kiss. return to Rome. And there. Beautiful. For many, Italian film is synonymous with Cina Cita, the sprawling film studio on the outskirts of Rome. Many of the 1960s and 70s most famous films were shot there. However, it wasn't always such a symbol of artistic freedom. In the 1940s, when it opened, it was dedicated by none other than Benito Mussolini. For Condé Nast Traveler, I'm Dana Dickey. For more information, please contact our website at www.cntraveler.com. To order home videos or DVDs of this or other programs in the Condé Nast Traveler Insider's Guide series, visit our website at www.cntraveler.com or call 1-866-98-GUIDE. Funding for Condé Nast Traveler Insider's Guide is provided in part by... What keeps you going? Achieve. New Balance.